and give you some background information. Here, the Nigerian coast is about 850 kilometers, and it's mainly a beach or a sandy beach coastline. However, around Ondo area where we study, it's a muddy coast. I'll be showing you images of it later. So we have a muddy coastline in some, some parts, and we have major challenges with this uh, mud coast. And then we also have some disease like skin. You find most of them have skin rashes and uh, lesions on their skin. Uh, so here I show you captions from different newspapers in the Ondo area. You see ocean salt ravages. Ocean salt ravages are it from community. This was reported by Daily Post. We also have a uh, Ondo Council appeals for resettlement. Uh, most times, the, the government has advised that they move out of this area, the settlers or the communities, and they refuse to because they believe that their life is tied to that area because it's the, the been passed on from generation to generation, so they refuse to move. And then here I show you images of this uh, marsh mud. Uh, the marsh as created by the mud coast, and then you have the uh, ocean effect of ocean soil flooding that area here. And also, this is a primary school, the students are unable to go to school because of the soil. So, uh, here it's a Google map image showing the coastline. Like I explained, we have a sandy beach generally, but around Ayeto area, we have mud coast here. And so, I've shown this uh, red arrow. These red uh, arrows to show you, you see that are, the, the coastline somehow deepens around here. So we have um, this waterway or a lagoon that uh, has out outlets at this point and this point and also at this point. But the outlets allow sea water to enter and pollute this uh, estuary. So right now in our last uh, field work, some of our students worked on this area using uh, salt uh, salinity profilers and some other instruments. And we found that there are high salt concentrations within the coastline and the estuary. So uh, recently, this community has uh, created a barrier here to stop the salt intrusion. But these two communities have been submerged completely. And uh, right now, most people have had to flee these communities. So, um, to provide background information of some of the concepts that we consider for the area, because we, we've been wondering why this ocean current is not having the same effect on this part of the coastline. It should, if, if we are having salt water intrusion or ocean surge effect, it should cut across the entire area. But it's only, it's more pronounced around here and here. So, and what uh, the preamble studies we've done is that maybe there's a tectonic uh, uh, influence on that uh, ocean surge around that area. So the tectonism is influence or increasing the effect of the ocean surge. So, it, uh, here, by just way of background, I show you how horse and gravel structures, which are tectonic structures, how they form. So when you have uh, an area with uh, tensional stresses of uh, tensional forces, you find that the, the, there's a kind of like a rip, ripping apart effect. And so you see here stages of the gravel forming. So have that at the back of your mind while I show you what we think is going on here. So here is a canyon. I'm sure so, uh, you know what a canyon is. It's just a tectonically controlled deep gorge or deep area where sediments are fed from the offshore into uh, from the onshore to the offshore area. So here is a Mahim Canyon, which is just near the Aito area of of the Aito area. So what we see is that this canyon is co uh, connected underneath. Here is uh, under the sea, and here is on land. 
so that there is a connection, and that is what we are investigating in this research. So here are preliminary investigations done by some of our project students using a sediment, a shallow seismic, we call it seg bottom segment profiler. So what we see here are, sorry, what we see here are like simple grabbing structures, like I showed in the other image, the more, uh, we see it along the estuary. So, what we, uh, this study, this image here, I'm just trying to show you uh, based background information of Niger Delta. We've done some research, this is one of my work which will soon be published. Uh, we found that there are so many forces, compressional and tensional forces acting on the Niger Delta. So there is no reason why, if there are tensional and compressional forces acting offshore, just on the coast, that it should not communicate with the land area around the place. So um, here are some previous studies by uh, authors from, we have uh, Billman, 1992, we have uh, Brown, Brownfield and Chapter, 2006, we have also recent studies by uh, that died all 2019, Omoto Shaw and uh, uh, I, I think uh, that was an Omoto Shaw. We also have one by, uh, I'm trying to recall the name. All these points to tectonism controlling this, uh, the nature of the uh, layout of the segments and the river around this uh, study area. So here you see. Uh, off the, uh, when you look at the Gulf of Guinea, and it, uh, if you look at literatures showing the geologic framework or the tectonic layout of the Gulf of Guinea, you find that we have two major fracture zones. That's the Romache and the chain fracture zone binding the Nigerian coastline. So the belief is that these two fracture zones are actually communicating on land and they may be the one that have influenced the tectonism that we see in those, uh, within the soil. So, uh, in, in progress of the re research is that we've made an application to the National Research Fund to get funding to do a proper study of that area. And then we also we would like to demonstrate that there's a tectonic control on the influence of sea surge in the area. It's not just wave action or uh, climate change that is driving the, the rates of ocean surge that we see in that area. So, and uh, then uh, we suggest stable zones in, within and around Aito because they have refused to relocate. So, in, within the, the study, we also like to find out stable zones where they can relocate to safely. At least stay there for some time, not the one that they have to move every season. And then we also like to prove or disprove the hypothesis that Mayankayan is linked. The Mayankayan I showed offshore. We like to prove or disprove that is linked to the tectonism we observed on land. Thank you so much for listening.